Here we are, acorn open, um, peg seven, a good peg, a peg I've never had before actually, it's not always in. Um, and we started across, as you can see, straight into fish with our usual little four mil pellets over four mils. Never in a rush on the first fish, as, as always. Last thing you want to do is pull out and tangle your rig on your sort of first fish. You know, that sort of tends to set the tempo, doesn't it, for your match. So always take your time. I must admit, I've gone across there and as soon as I put that in um, and sort of pushed it into the boards, there are boards there now. There's boards down the inside and on the far side. It's all been sort of boarded back in the banks now, which is quite nice. But I've cut, it wasn't done that long ago, but I come to realise it quite a little bit of the grass has grown over and it would have been simple for me to walk across the bridge at the start there before well, before the start I should say and um, take that out but I can't do it now because um, people are fishing around the bridge etc so uh, I'll just have to put up with that but I hadn't realized there is one or two blades sort of hanging over that are just hampering the float a little bit carp are giving a really good account of herself I noticed that um, the day before to be honest I was at a, a, a sorry the week before I was at another fishery and um, and I noticed it, it very much the same it's that time of year now isn't it they're fattening up they're looking for those fatty foods um, pellets and meat and such meat especially can't use meat at acorn meat's not allowed so um, uh, so it's pellets for me it's pellets for me today um, and it's a really simple match. I felt with so many people coming here, this this fishery now has got so popular. There's so many chaps come down here, good anglers, because it's right near Bristol, so you get quite a lot of the Bristol boys come, and also because it's next to the motorway, you get quite a few of the Welsh lads come over as well, and they fish it quite often, a lot more than I do, and I do feel a lot of the locals now have got it quite tapped. So to come here and compete, I thought I've got to keep it really simple um, and fish to my strengths. You fancy peak early, didn't you? Fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on the putty? It's still going after all this rain, is it? I should have come round and cleared this out, but 
I can't believe how much that grass has grown over the boards, hasn't it? So you can see there as well, I've I've come away there's that bit of grass hanging in where we were fishing. So I came away, you can see how I've, I've replumbed another line. It's got a couple of meters to me right now. Um, but it was just a bit annoying really. And, and when fish come in, they were moving the little bits of grass around, which again was pushing the float around, etc. So I've moved a couple of meters to me right. It's a little bit clearer. Um, so yeah, that'll, that'll do. Nothing really fast, but just steady. Ate a lot of time on the video. Um, we caught quite a few on this line, on fours, and then it just progressively got slower. So I've actually switched now um, to micros. Still fishing a four mil hard pellet. But cab pot in micros, dampen micros. what we were saying just a little bit earlier there with um, a positive approach I don't mean we're putting in loads of bait I mean mentally it's a positive approach as in we're not setting up too much so all I've set up today is to fish across to fish a top kit and a short four if that happens straight in front of me I'm not always expecting that line to come good but if it's one of those days where it does come good you can't not have it there ready really and that's the same with any commercial fishery always put that line in just in front of you just past those keep nets because if it's one of those days you've got it there ready you know if you look around and suddenly people are catching big fish and they're coming in close you're you, you've got that line ready to start throwing bait in by hand and, and be on them i'm just trickling a few cup two or three little six mil pellets in there at the moment we did give it a try just now and it didn't happen but um and then we got our two edges so and that's it i just think i got a fish a positive approach you know and when I say positive I mean not too many lines nice and simple and then you can monitor those things because of their simplicity if that makes sense yeah and that, that, that those micros have certainly revived that line across now quite a few fish on that quite a few small fish across with the four mil over the micros as I say I did cut quite a bit of footage out small fish but steady some people start short with paste and things even after we've had all that rain and I do feel after that that rain has affected it a little bit but I think that's made it a bit of an evener I think it might have caught some of the more locals out if you like so that's made it a little bit more of an even playing field we'll see I've got Brian Slipper a couple of pegs to my left and I got Dave, who I've met for the first time on my right from Bristol. Again, never rushing to get these fish in. I always think with things like when you're feeding micros and that, you know, you, you put those micros in and whilst you're playing that fish, the next one's getting lined up across. So never rush it too much. So I've had about two hours across in the match now. So a third of the match across and we've had about 50 pounds, just over 50 pounds. So quite steady. Fish from a pound to three pound. Um, but I knew fishing like I do across, it would be steady and I could sort of guarantee myself those fish until it sort of withered away and died. Um, until they get a bit cute and they just sort of back away, don't they? Or you, or you fish them out, whichever. Um, but... Uh, Whereas I just felt fishing in that deeper water with that cold rain on the water on the bottom was always going to be a little bit risky. So 
So we're back on the short line. We got nothing on that, to be honest. All day we didn't get anything on it. I kept drip feeding those those six mils in and barely any. You know, two or three six mils every five minutes or so. So nothing really. Um, and we never really caught on it. So I've then gone into the open water off to my left at 13 metres and just slapped a rig around. But again, due, due to the sort of rain that we've had, I never really fancied that. But it didn't take two seconds to put up. I mean, the amount of room I had off to me left, I'd have been silly not to. But again, we never caught on it. So after two steady hours, the third hour, we're sort of struggling to find any fish, really. Or anything consistent. So back across, and I've gone left now and opened up a new line again. So we're working hard, aren't we, you know? Put a little bit of ground bait down our edges and um and nice we're a little bit surprised it's about two and three quarter hours in now i spent about three quarters of an hour trying to do everything else and i've gone down to the edge on the left there we did have to wait on it a while but it went under so we'll certainly be trying that again in a minute and see if it goes under for a second time if it goes under for a second time then i'll be then I'll be opening up me, me right hand side as well, putting a little bit of feed down there. And even if we have to wait on bites, I, I don't mind doing that, you know. So yeah, really good sign. And the weather, I just can't seem to make its mind up at the moment. One minute it's sort of cloudy, looks like we're going to get a drop of rain. Then the sun comes out and it's nice and warm. The wind blows, then it drops. Quite inconsistent. Yeah, and a second fish, so definitely going to open up the line to me right. I don't want to push it on one line either. I don't want to sit there trying to catch more than two fish. It's that early, really. Um, so we're now sort of just over halfway through the match. It's a six-hour match. And I don't want to just sit down that one edge clattering them because it's not going to last. So I'm going to top that line up and leave it and open up that right-hand line. We're having a look on that left whilst I fed that right, waiting five minutes, but I didn't wait on it too long. If, if I wait on it, on it too long, I might have caught one, but I've been waiting too long. I don't want to catch the only fish in there, you know. As I say, we're about halfway, and, and, and we've hooked one down the right, which is brilliant news, isn't it? Great sign. Such a good fishery acorn. If you're close enough to get there, get yourself there. It really is. Good good friendly bunch and um, just good fishing. You get a good day's fishing off any peg. And I mean any peg. Been looking around as I've been fishing as well and and no one's running away with anything there's off fish being caught you know here and there but um but I don't see anybody sort of stringing a run of fish together so I think we're doing all right of course there's a lot more on the lakes on the lake I can't see but yeah I feel like it's, it's going all right
so yeah so the pattern is such is is just to knit, try and knit, stay on one of those edges to catch two fish, then swatch, switch to the other line and catch two fish. But once you get into a rhythm of doing that and it works, and when I come away from catching a two fish down that line, I then put the big cup out there. I'm not filling it up. It's just like a hundred milligram bait in there. And I put that hundred milligram bait in there away from the bank. What I do is you plumb out from the bank plumb out feeling the shelf till you feel the shelf go away and I put that 100 mil in where the shelf falls away and the idea of that is I don't want the carp right up against the bank trying to get in behind me float I want the carp to be attracted by the grain bait and that way by putting it on the edge of, edge of the shelf I'll get fish come up the shelf sort of looking and when I cab pot and fish with me bait I fish that tight into the boards Now the left hand line doesn't feel quite right. Same thing, it doesn't feel right. It's not plumbing quite as nice as I'd like it to. So what I've done is added another section and I've hit the pole on the on the bank there and gonna stuck a stick in to where the boards are because the boards on my left hand side are under the water. So I cannot see the boards. I don't want to be cupping my feet on top of the boards or anything like that. Or, or have me float too far off the boards. So I stuck a, a, a couple of little sticks in there just to give myself a marker. And then I've gone back across just because I've got up off the box and I've, I've you know, so I've probably, um, last thing I want to do is catch one after I sort of disturbed them and that. So go back across and have a little go. Which doesn't come to fruition to be honest. Nothing across again, it wasn't coming back to life. That felt better. We went down that left edge, just that extra section on. So our right hand um, line is a top kit and a short four, and our left hand one is a top kit, short four, and the number five. So if we did start the, the margins too early, or you know the right one's a bit close and they get a bit spooky, we've always got that bit longer line, haven't we? And like I say, I just didn't like the way the other one plumbed. It might be all right later if they really rock up. I can come shorter again, but it just didn't quite feel right. They're a bit better quality than the cross, aren't they? Although they're not massive. Okay, so it's not really fast, but it is steady. Um, waiting on bites every, you know, a little bit, but um, no, it's good. We're feeding our usual um, little, well, sort of medium-sized cab pot, I'd say. And uh, I've made the grain bait 
50-50 with micros, so normal, standard really, isn't it? That's where we sort of start. I, I only ever knock up a bait box of this, so as if it, the ratio's wrong, I can chuck that bait box on the grass, pick up my ground bait bow, that's down there on the right there, the blue blue circular bow there, and um, I can start again. You know, I could, I, if I need to draw fish and it's really, really difficult, I, I can cut out the micros. If it's really, really good or I start foul hooking, I can cut out the ground bait altogether and go just micros. But um, I have dampened up the ground bait because of the depth of the margins, two and a half foot. But I'm pleased to say, because of that rain and everything else, I think, um, I'm not getting loads of liners. I've not foul hooked anything. So when we go to cup it, cup it in, we, we we will do a short video soon of um, exactly how it is we cab pot down the edges. Um, and, and, and a lot of people do that. And there's a lot of videos out there, I'm sure. But um, you might pick something up from from how I do it. It, it sort of works for me. Um, but basically, I just hose in the, that little in that pot, and um, I turn the cab pot over. And I, but I turn it over about eight ten inches away from the boards and empty it and then put my float in as tight as i can to the boards so again i'm still oh because because that bait will wash around a little bit as well so it's going to spread up to the boards anyway but i still always like to get my bait trying to get it in tightest trying to get it in the highest up the shelf you know avoid any of that foul hooking Start foul hooking fish, and, and you know you're just going to pull your own hair out. You're going to you're going to um, slow your peg up, have breakages, tangles, endless frustration. To catch well and bag, if you like, to a certain extent down the edges, you you, you don't have to pull fish hard or start fishing heavy elastics. If it's the sort of fishery like this tobber, and you're looking for doing ridiculous amount of weight then yes you do because you've got to be you know technically proficient for that weight and when they turn up you've got to make the most of them have you but in places like this and most other fisheries you don't have to pull hard and you don't have to have ridiculous kit what well, all you've got to do is be methodical keep it simple and by keeping it simple you can read it easily like we're doing today and and then you can soon start, you know, threading fish together. And once you start, you know, consistently catching them, it don't take long to make a weight at all. So you can see I'm just turning the pot over there. And then I'll just lift it up. So that bait goes down. I lift the rig up and just swing in past it in tight to them boards. We still had to wait a little bit. We put our jacket on because that weather still can't make up its mind and, it, and the day's getting on now and I can feel that temperature has just gone down a little bit. So although we're trying to catch sort of two fish off a line then feed that sort of 80 to 100 milligram bait and micros off just the off of the edge of that shelf and then switch to the other line and just cab pot catch a couple then top that up turn back round repeat the process just because we're doing that doesn't mean we're, we're regimented to that i'm still i'm still looking for signs if one of the the, the, the sides goes really solid you know and, and and I can stay on it for longer or the fish get bigger. You know, it might be that the first fish is bigger and the second one goes tiny, you know, and I, maybe I'll decide if that, that happens. I only want to take one fish from each line. Just looking for little signs all the time. And also where I'm, I'm, I'm fishing, uh, catching two and then doing that big pot, it might be worth dropping in and fishing it after that big pot every now and then because you might fall a bigger fish or something because they've got into a bit of a rhythm you know so now and then you've got to just change it up a little bit just see if you can um, pick your catch rate up or the size of the fish there are some big fish in here now 
some sort of mid doubles but they are they are a rarity the mid doubles but there are quite a lot of fish in here now in the sort of 10 pound bracket and they're the ones you really like not getting a lot of them today but but they're but they are in here and you don't take many of those to start mounting the weight So it's dead maggots on the hook and I've tried everything from, you know, four, five, three, even two maggots on the hook. Um, just seeing if I get a slightly better or quicker response by, you know, having multiple maggots on there or just a couple. Um, and to be fair, it hasn't made a great deal of difference. So I'm sticking with four at the moment. Trying to pick four of the biggest ones I can out of the bait box. And I just spread them on my knee. Um, then I can see them and hook them on. And then I leave some on my knee when I go down the edge, you know, ready for next time. Something I sort of learnt from um, blood, bloodworm fishing and that on the canals years ago. So that left hand side with that bit extra pole certainly um i felt that sort of definitely benefited us as i say it was just a lit i just didn't quite like the slope on that that slightly shorter line there The um, tackle we're using is our standard fare for sort of acorn. Uh, we're not after massive fish, are we? It's just 2.0 rig and um, 016 hook length. I don't go any heavier than that down here. Acorn is never about getting the fish in quick anyway. Acorn is always about getting the bite. Getting the bite as fast as you can. The same with a cross. I fish it a lot lighter than a lot of people across with pellets and that. I've said, I have mentioned this before when we've been down here, but I, I think that's critical. It's about getting the bite. And when you get the bite, having them hang on for that split second, because the bites you get are so tiny from these fish down here, because there's nowhere, if you look at it, there's nowhere for them to hide. Nowhere for them to hide at all. They're always within pole reach. So these fish are cute. They're hungry and catchable, but they're cute. You've got to do it right. So my floats are often dotted down. They're not like normal margin um, rigs, you know. Dotted down. Back shot an inch just above the float so as I can hold the line right up above that float nice and tall and then you get that quick little dig and I'm ready to react straight away you basically you just strike at everything every little dink and I think that was Tom ring me he's over on a bridge peg He's just telling me how he's getting on and asking me how it's going over here.
got a nice view of um, Bunter here. Bunter's one there, sat on the point on peg five, making a very good peg, look very ordinary. But at least the ducks are keeping him company, aren't they? <laughs> We do give each other a bit of stick. We have a bit of fun. really good run to the um, the shorter edge there to me right um, which surprised me because that's sort of between me and Dave there and I got a little bit more room on me left um, especially going that bit longer as well but they certainly rocked out better on that right hand line for sure in the latter stages um, but then not long after that we sort of got into the last hour of the match and it was noticeably it, it, it all slowed um, which is a bit unfortunate because I made a bit of a schoolboy error as well. I took that left-hand line, took that number five off and come back again. So I was on the same distance as this line. Where this line on the right-hand side kicked off so well, I didn't want to um, start putting on different lengths of sections and things. I just wanted to keep that short four going on for both sides. So we did that. I did catch a couple there on the left um, where it was that little bit more sloped, but it was, it was still all wrong. You know, um, I should have kept that definitely should have kept that that little bit longer i think i'd have had a couple more fish because we were waiting on fish those last 45 minutes it definitely slowed um which just goes to show doesn't it there's always room for improvement you know um there's always reflection and that to be had speaking of which we'll have a little summary just at the end so um do stay tuned and i'll see you all again in a minute 